The annual Ondersteport Feedlot Challenge availed again this year. The purpose of the challenge is to get fifth-year veterinary students interested in and informed about production animals and systems. Today, we look back on highlights of this year's challenge, so stay tuned. My name is Anai van der Merwe and I am a first year student um, on Onderste Poort. I am one of 23 students in a group and we call ourselves Keeping Up with the Kaudashians. We um, are here to make 20 beasts to ransom or to mean um, with the perfect formula to find them to see how healthy they are and then to see how much they can get over 105 days. So come so with me up a day, so many Kaudashians and yeah. Staan ons op vroeg uit de kooi, net voor 6. Dan komen we af met ons fietsies van die OP Village, ons residents af. Meeste van ons blij daarom daar, so dit is heel wat nabij. Dan komen we af en ons moet dan elke ochtend vullen een sekere presentatie van die dagse voerigje. In die ochtendigje ons 40% en dan in die laadmiddagje ons 60% van die voer. Middagvoer is hier om min by half vier sekaan, dan moet die post in die bank wees. So ja, ons het 20 bille wat hier achter my staan. Al die groepe het hier jaar 20 bille gekry en ons het op hulle een tender gehad wat vir ons een bedrag moes ingee. Ons kon range van 35 rand per kilogram tot maximum van 45 rand per kilogram. Ons het vir hierdie prachtige pakkie van ons 41.5 rand per kilogram betaal en ons is baie gelukkig met hulle. Hulle het baie potentiaal en ek denk ons gaan baie goeie dinge van hulle kan sien oor hierdie tijd daar. I'm part of the Kardashians. I am the disease manager. This morning we had a case of acidosis. So basically acidosis is when the uh, rumen pH is a bit lower than it should be. And then we treated it by giving it an antibiotic, a probiotic, some magnesium, oxide, and then hopefully our boy will get better. Goedemiddag, ik is Maarten Botma. Ik is de kraalbestuurder van groep 7, of ook bekend als 
as die Kardashians. En uh, ja, ek gaan net vandag bykie met julle gesels oor my verantwoordelikere is so, uh, wat ek alles doen, wat ons doen dat die oukies hier achter my groei, dat hulle hulle hoogtes kan bereik. Uh, so eerstens, dis maar eindelijk al die, die nitty gritty goeikies uh, as kraalbestuurder, net om seker te maak dat die beestes inname uh, het sy water of kos op die op optimales en op die hoogste is. So eerstens gaan ek het praat oor die kostbak, so die kostbak word natuurlijk elke keer ons voertuig keer een dag, elke keer voor ons voer word die, word die voerbak schoon gemaakt, um, kyk ons weer kost is oor, dat ons sien dat die, dat die voer in nie sak nie, tweede is dan voor die voerbak, uh, is daar een concrete slap, dit maak ons dan weeklik skoon, net om te verseker dat die diere gemakkelijk is, wanneer hulle daar aan toe gaan, want uh, ons het bevind, vooral onder het gereen het, ons het bijvoorbeeld om 24 uur, oor die 140 mm reen gehad op een dag, as het modderig na, is daar, en nat is daar, dan is die diere verschrikkelijk huiverig, om daar te staan en te eet, wat dan dus leid tot uh, nie, op suboptimale voerkostinname, vo- 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 en ja, dit is natuurlijk nie ideaal nie. Dan daarna wil ek net praat oor die waterbak, die waterbak maak ons dan ook wekelijk skoon, uh, of soos ons voel nodig, maar wat meestal wekelijk is, dit is ook maar net om te verseker dat die dieren die water inneem, uh, want waterinname is ook belangrijk, die diere moet gedeerdeerd, of die diere moet nie gedeerdeerd raak nie, um, en dit is vir ons baie belangrijk, want ek meen hoe meer water hulle druk, uh, beter gaan hulle kostinname wees, so uh, ja, dit is maar basis my, my doel as kraalbestuurder. en ek is in beheer van die ransoene en die voer van ons beeste en ek is in die Kaldashian span. Um, ons het vandag ons voer gemeng vir die derde keer nou al. Hoe um, die dinge gewerk het is ons het ons beeste gekry. Hulle was klaar gebackround. So ons het hulle gekry en nog vir so'n week uh, backgrounding gegeen ook om bykie te help met die aanpassing. Um, en daarna het ons hulle op een stater gesit um, en ons is stands bezig met, om, um, met die grauwer wat ons hulle, wat ons hulle voer. So, ons het voer drie goed, een stater, een grauwer en een finisher. Al drie is maar basis min of meer diezelfde met klein veranderinge. Ons beeste was aanvankelijk zwaarder as wat ons voor gehoop het en bereken het. So hulle is klaar redelijk uitgegroei. So wat ons eindelijk, ons enigste doel is nou om hulle net vet te kry. So ons ransoen het een beetje hoer energie in, um, juist vir die rede, omdat ons hulle net juist wil vet he. Um, vir die menge reis, soos ons nou vandag gemenge het met die grauwer, um, uh, algemene, hoe ons het algemeen bereken, is ons ge, um, kyk maar hoeveel het hulle geëet en wat hulle gewichte was. Um, en so bereken ek hoeveel kost hulle gaan nodig hee, soos ons het nou vir drie weke gemeng, so ek het uitgewerkt hoeveel kost hulle vir die volgende drie weke gaan nodig hee op hulle um, lichaamsgewig en hoeveel hulle opgetel het tot so ver. Ek is Chantal en ek is die assisterende coördineerder van die Kardashians. Soos jylle kan sien met die stof op my kleren en die vuilmerk op my gezicht was het een lekker bedrijwige dag hier by onderste poort. Maar van die Kardashians kant af wil ons net sê hoeveel hierdie borstkap van jylle aankou vir ons beteken. Nie net het het rarige samen zijn in ons groep vir ons veroorzaak nie, maar dit is rarige ongelooflike geleentheid om so vroeg in ons veehaards loop aan al een goeie verhouding op te bou met so'n enorme maatskapie soos Jelanko. Ons sien rechtig uit vir dit wat Jelanko in die toekomst vir ons bedrijf en vir die hele bedrijf van dieren gezondheid sal kan doen. Daar 
het jylle dit, een dag in die lewe som met die Kaudashians, van vroeg aan die kooi tot laat onderse voermengerij. Het ons bloed, zweet en trane gegeef vir ons 20 bille. Ons hoop jylle dit som met ons geniet en ons hoop ons kon vir jylle ook een liefde vir ons bille opkikker. Stel bekend, die nieuwe, sterker as ooit tevore, 165 kilowatt Hilux GR Sport. We are at the Honest Report Feedlot Challenge, where fifth year vet students will take on the feedlot by simulating the entire beef production process. This exercise is designed to give them valuable practical experience. Today's leg of the challenge is the final on the hoof evaluation, where we will also be meeting the winning team. I'm Dr. Andy Hansen from the Production Animal Studies. I'm the coordinator of the Feedlot Challenge. This year we had quite a challenge specifically over the last 30 days where we have a lot of rain. So the rain was so much and with that built up of mud and that impacted our growth negatively. Before that the cattle grew very well and um, we were on the way to do record gains and record growth rates but the biggest challenge was the mud and the rain. This year, one of the biggest achievements was the class as a whole. Their attitude, I think, was really good. They never moaned. They always got stuck in and did the thing. The cattle grew very well, so they got big. And because they were so big, they were eating a lot. And because they were eating so lot, they had to mix a lot of food. So the peer students had to work till late in the evening to produce this food that they were feeding the cattle. And I think that was a significant good achievement from the student side. I am the coordinator of the Daily Moose. Um, this is our group of bulls that we have here for the Honor Support Feedlot Challenge. Um, so one of our greatest challenges during this challenge was the severe weather conditions. It was very wet and muddy and this decreased the feed intake of the cattle a lot. So we had a bit of an issue to get them to uh, finish off and round off quite nicely. Um, and if I have to sum up this challenge, I would say it was quite shitty, but wonderful. <laughs> My name is Elizabeth Parvis. I am group coordinator for Stakealot.com. And next to me, we have Rango 308 and Tiny Tim 320. So one word I would use to describe this challenge has been epic. So one thing I would have changed throughout this challenge would have been to do more coordinated bunk management since the beginning of the challenge. So in the beginning we made an error of taking bunk scores in the morning and in the afternoon and this resulted in skewing of our results in the beginning. Um, so the correct way to have done this would have been to take bunk scores in the morning only and then adapt our feed according to that. Once our feed was properly coordinated this actually resulted in an increase in our daily feed intake. Uh, good day, I'm Ronaldo Oosthuizen, Group 8 Need for Feed. I would sum up this feedlot challenge as a quality practical exposure um, because I see in the future a need for, or currently and in the future, a need for quality practical exposure for students and I think this situation, uh, this feedlot provides that opportunity for students to have some quality practical exposures, quality learning experiences um, that contributes a lot to our studies. 
we had some challenges during this time of the feedlot and the, one of the biggest challenges was our crawl condition due to the weather conditions, a lot of rain in short periods and we tried to control this challenge by digging drenches for the bulls to walk in from the feeding trough to the water troughs um, and then we tried also to make a square clean pad, dry pad for them where they can rest uh, away, far as possible this way from the uh, feeding troughs. So yeah. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Falskink. I am the group coordinator of uh, Group 2. We are called Team No Mistakes. And uh, I can safely say, I think between all of us, we made the least amount of mistakes. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll give one phrase of this whole experience of feedlot. Um, as you can see the views of my beautiful four little bulls here, or well, I can call the big actually. Pain in the ass, but absolutely amazing. I wouldn't have changed it for anything else. And I loved it every single second. Um, in terms of stuff that I learned, especially with feeding, uh, I think the most important thing that I learned is you need to be consistent. If you are not consistent with your feed, then your cows will become problematic and you will definitely lose out on a few kgs with growth and everything. So yeah, definitely feeding is a vital part of your whole feedlot experience. Uh, thank you everyone, all the sponsors, and I really hope um, you enjoyed it as much as we did. Thanks everybody. Good day, I'm Hannestein from Zoetis. I'm the Sleutelrekening Bestuurder for the Voerkrale. Uh, ons is na al een paar jaar betrokken bij die onderste poort feedlot challenge. Ons gloe baie die toekomst van die bedrijf lê by die veeartse en die ontwikkeling van die veeartse en so dat hulle blootstelling kan kry aan die groot dierbedrijf en aan die rooivleisbedrijf. En hierdie is een uitstekende geleentheid vir hulle om te leer om met beeste te werk, hoe voerkrale werk en dan ook blootstelling aan ons producte. Ons het hierdie jaar dan ook een fotocompetitie aan die begin van die uh, met die afskop van die feedlot challenge gehad wat ons sikke weekies vir, die, vir elke groep gegee het en uh, hulle moest dan groepfoto's gemaakt het en die meest creatieve groepfoto het prijse gewen. Ons het hem de weg gegeven vir die drie groepen wat gewen het hulle het baie oulike foto's ingeskryf en dit was dan primair vir de bewustmaking in die bedrijf rondom die feedlot challenge so dat die mense kan weet wat aangaan by onderste poort en uitstekende werk wat hulle doen om die studenten op te lei rondom hierdie voerkraalprogram Hello everyone, um, I'm Jan Karel Limbach. I'm the group coordinator of hopefully the winning team. Um, love me tender. Um, I'm very proud of my team. Um, if I have to sum up the Onuste Poort Feedlot Challenge in one word, I'll say it's relevant. Um, I say this because for a veterinary student, this challenge, you learn a lot. And that's why I will sum it up as relevant. And then um, one of the biggest challenge we as Group 6 faced um, was the mud. Um, as you can see, still now, um, lots of mud. Um, and our pen is, is where all the water accumulates because we are a bit lower than the rest of the pens. Um, so we really struggled with mud and with water and with the wet season we had, um, didn't help. Um, but the way we combated this problem was to make pathways for our cattle so we made two pathways one on each side um, and it worked very well you could see the cattle was happy to to use the pathways to get to the water and to get to the feed hello my name is Anne van der Merwe and I am the coordinator for group seven we are keeping up with the Kardashians um, so the feedlot challenge for me, um, it's not, it wasn't like all about the cattle. So I would sum it up with um, teamwork makes a dream work. So we had a really good team and good team spirit and everything. So that really made my feedlot challenge worth it and amazing and everything. So yeah, I would sum it up with that. And then um, animal health. So we have this one subject also, um, we call it VOH. So it's one health. And I think it really, um, you can see it nicely with the feedlot challenge where the health of the animals will um, go into like the health of the people as well so keeping them at optimum health will improve obviously everything um, that we get from them so it is very important and 
conditions make it really difficult, but it's still our responsibility to try and keep it at the optimum so that we can get the optimum out of it. So I'm Mark Clayton and I'm from group th uh, five, which was Deja Mu. Um, the biggest thing that the feedlot has taught us in terms of our studies, this was the first time where we've actually had a full hands-on experience from start to finish. Meaning from when they came, we literally handled them in terms of tendering. That's when we chose the cattle up to processing. So giving them the antibiotics, their vaccines, the tagging, all of that, as well as today, which is the on the hoof evaluation and up to the slaughtering, which is happening on Friday. Um, as a group, the best thing that we've learned is that um, teamwork really does go a long way and where your short form might be is somebody's strong point and that just works together, you manage to achieve what you really want in the end goal. Good day, I'm Daniel Swartz, I'm the coordinator of um, Group 1 and um, yeah, this is the Feedlot Challenge. Okay, if I can sum up the, um, the feedlot challenge in a phrase or so, I think it's the best practical experience that we can get here at Honor Support. Even though it's so muddy, I think there's nothing else that, that gets you so close to a practical exper experience like this. Um, I must say some of the challenges that we experienced, at the beginning it, um, it worked out that we bought a group of cattle that was predominantly Bos Indicus and you get the two types of two, two main types of breeds, Bos Indicus and Bos Taurus. Bos Taurus is known to grow much better in feedlots than Bos Indicus and because we have predominantly Bos Indicus types of breed, um, our growth rate wasn't as good as all the other groups. Um, our average daily gain is quite lower, um, that means that we will have um, a little little bit of lower uh, slaughter weights at the end um, but what counted in our favor is the fact that we bought our cattle um, at an extremely cheap price um, so at the end I think profit wise it will help us a lot um, but something like on the hoof evaluation I don't think we have the best cattle. Good day, my name is Johan Oendal, I'm from South African Fat Stock Judging Association. Um, we did the On The Hoof uh, finals competition today with uh, eight groups of the fifth year students at Onestepoort. Um, this year is my seventh year that I've been involved at Onestepoort. Um, initially, I think the group this year had very good selection of cattle. Um, I think a little bit better than last year. I think it's a little bit better backgrounding calves that they got. In the first couple of weeks, I think it went well. And then I think the wheels came off. When nature opened the heavens and, and it started raining, it was, it was tough. Uh, the pens were very wet, very muddy. Um, the feed conversion ratios of the cattle went down because of that. Cattle don't like to stand in mud and, and eat. They just don't like that at all. But overall, over the 104 days that the students had to feed the cattle, it was actually, they've done excellent. Um, given the conditions they had this year, um, I think they did very, very, very well. Um, and then it's like I said, there was, there was, there was a lot of challenges. But uh, they pushed through and uh, today we showed the results and I think everybody is happy and I think that the students learned something. And every year I learn something from them as well.
Third plate, it's group eight. who are the winners so basically all the winners is um, well the whole group how we put the um, marking to it it's your production so your production you will get a certain mark for that then the finances and the finances the group that made the most profit it will for all the groups the finance count double and then we had the representation so all of that the group with the most marks was group six and then group one and three and then all the others come behind that and thank you very much and congratulations. Hello everyone, I'm Jan Karel Limbach. I'm group coordinator of group six. Love me tender. Um, a wonderful team we were. Um, we were blessed um, to win the Feedlot Challenge 2022 um, and it was an amazing experience. So in this Feedlot Challenge um, we learned a lot and I think it's, it's so relevant. Um, we learned practically um, what feedlotting is about. Like in our veterinary course we learn a lot about the management of disease and nutrition. But that's not ultimately what it's about. It's about the financial aspect of it. And in the feedlot challenge, we were, we were included in, in all those aspects, from buying the cattle to selling the cattle, calculating the, um, the profits. So um, this gave us a broad overview of the whole feedlotting industry. Um, and I think that's, that's amazingly valuable for, for us as vets. We'll definitely be able to um, take that in our careers forward.